I have a dimple at the top of my right cheek. Everyone tells me it's cute, but the truth is, whenever I look at it, it reminds me of the reason I got it. When I was about four, I was climbing over a chair. I fell and cut my face open against a table, which left me with the dimple. It's not the only scar on my face, either. I have loads of cuts and marks because I was always having accidents. So eventually, my mom took me to a therapist. My mom told me she knew I had a serious problem when the therapist asked me to draw a simple straight line. It didn't matter how many times he showed me how to draw it, I couldn't copy him. That's when I was diagnosed with dyspraxia. It's sometimes called clumsy child syndrome. So that's why I was falling over all the time. Dyspraxia means I have problems with muscle control affecting my movement and coordination. My brain has difficulties with processing information as well. Facts go in, but they fall straight out again, so I can't remember things. I used to get in trouble at school because teachers would explain something to me, but five minutes later, I'd forget what they just said. Everyone thought I was being the class clown when I said I couldn't remember, but I was telling the truth. After a while, it wasn't so funny. I struggled to learn how to read. It wasn't until I was ten that those little squiggles on the page began to make sense, but by then, I had gone from being the class clown to the stupid kid. I got teased all the time. People called me names. Nobody wanted to be friends with me. When I went into the eighth grade, everything changed. I had a new teacher. She was really patient and kind. She arranged for me to be tested for dyslexia. And I discovered I wasn't just dyslexic. I was severely dyslexic. Soon afterwards, I was diagnosed with dyscalculia as well. It turned out I had learning difficulties that affected my reading, writing, and math. Yay me! Now I had an explanation for why I'd been struggling so much in school. Things got easier. I got extra help with my classes and my grades improved. Some people still teased me. But when I told them about my diagnosis, most kids were understanding. I even made a few good friends, and we used to hang out together during lunch, talking about comics and movies. There are good things about having learning disabilities. Although I struggle with academic subjects, I'm really creative. It's like my mind's bursting with ideas all the time, and I have to express them with art. I recently won a local competition for one of my paintings. I was in the local newspaper and everything. Although my early years at school were really hard because of all my learning disabilities, I feel like being dyspraxic has made me a stronger person. I have good friends who love me for my strange little habits and understand that when I forget their name, it isn't personal. My brain just can't remember information very well. I see the world in a very different way to most people, and that's okay. My learning disabilities might mean I process information differently, but I'm not stupid. I've been watching loads of videos about psychology, and I love figuring out how the brain works. Maybe when I'm older, I'll become a psychologist and help kids who have dyspraxia and dyslexia, just like me. Sheldon Horowitz here at the National Center for Learning Disabilities. Welcome to our Ask the Expert series. We've had a number of parents write in and ask questions about dyspraxia, so what I'd like to do is just provide a little bit of an overview of what dyspraxia is and what kinds of treatments, what kinds of interventions we use to treat uh, children with dyspraxia. First, let's say that dyspraxia is not in and of itself a subtype of learning disabilities, but many children with learning disabilities have dyspraxia or features of dyspraxia. What does dyspraxia mean? Dyspraxia is a motor skill difficulty. It's a motor skill disorder. And it's a very complex disorder. 
it isn't just one thing. Some children with dyspraxia have difficulties with handwriting. That's one of the things that we see most in children when they experience dyspraxic kinds of uh, problems. We also see it in fine motor things like dressing and buttoning and snapping and zippering and using utensils, doing fine motor kinds of things. When we think about dyspraxic children, however, very often what we think of is kids who are bumping into things. They're clumsy. They have difficulty with balance. Children with dyspraxia very often have problems learning to ride a bicycle or you know, watch them in the, in the playground trying to catch and throw and use a hula hoop and bounce a ball. These are things that are really difficult for children with dyspraxia. Watching them dance or teaching them rhythmic steps, also something that's very difficult for children with dyspraxia. Um, these are kids who, when they're walking to their desk, because they don't negotiate space really well, they often have difficulties telling um, where things begin and end, they bump into things. So they're knocking things over, they're you know, dropping things and bumping into other people's um, desks. And they'll also sometimes have difficulties with negotiating strength. So they may grab something really tight or they may hold something a little bit too loose. These are some of the early signs and some of the ongoing signs of dyspraxia in school-age children. What's interesting also is dyspraxic kids, or kids with dyspraxia, also have difficulties with speech. Very often they have difficulties articulating the sounds of words. They don't move their tongues and they don't shape their mouths properly to form sounds. So they have some articulation disorders. They may also have difficulty modulating the volume of their speech. They may be a little too loud, they may be a little too soft, they may have difficulties adjusting their volume of speech in different settings. And they also may speak much too quickly or a little bit too slowly or they may mix and match and it may be difficult just in terms of how it is that their speech is perceived and how it's heard by other people. Part of dyspraxia is also that children will have difficulty with memory and focus. So a fair number of children with dyspraxia also look like have attentional issues and some in fact do. And it looks like they have some memory issues and they may have difficulties with memory skills more so than the non-disabled population. What's very typical of children with dyspraxia is that they have difficulty planning their motor skill activities and they often have difficulty completing a task because they get lost in the process. It's so difficult for them to do some of the things that need to get done, they often don't complete the tasks that are demanded of them. So, what do you do? What are the kinds of treatments? Well, dyspraxia is not something that goes away. But the signs and symptoms of dyspraxia will sometimes lessen over time and some of those signs actually dissipate as the person gets older and they develop strategies but also body strength. They have practice doing some of the things that were difficult early on in their lives. Very important for young children who show signs of dyspraxia is to be involved in speech language therapy to work, to work on some of those articulation and volume and rate of speech issues. Occupational therapy is also very helpful, again, especially with young children and children in the early to middle grades. And physical therapy is also helpful for some children to help negotiate some of those balance and coordination issues that they'll demonstrate. Um, some of these things last a long time. Some of these things will go away with practice, but very much like is the case with some learning disabilities, the signs and symptoms of dyspraxia will not just by themselves go away.